Greetings and welcome. My name is Mike Bankhead. I am your host. I am a bass player and songwriter from the Gem City, Dayton, Ohio. This episode going up on Wednesday, December 20th, 2023. This is exactly six months to the day that I released my concept project, I Am Experienced. Every song on that record is in a different genre. They are all about black experiences. And today, you'll hear from the project engineer on the You Could Be My Aramis podcast. Yes, for episode 110, I am pleased to welcome Rizzo. This is a conversation that we had and recorded uh, actually just about a year ago when we were having the final listening session wrapping up the completed mixes of the album. You're going to get some thoughts on the process, what the songs are about, a a real look into what people who make records feel about the work that they make. Uh, In this case, uh, straight from the mouth of the very talented engineer and producer Rizzo from Dreamcatcher Recording Studio in Reynoldsburg, Ohio. Let's get to the conversation. Hi there. H to the Rizzo. Hey, Mike. I got to like come up with a second half of that little ditty. I don't know. I, I feel like it's it's plenty. That's know? enough. H yeah, to feels... the Rizzo. <laughs> How you doing? I'm good. I'm doing great. Yeah. The Armagnac did... is helping. The Armagnac <laughs> always helps. Uh, what did we just get done doing? Well, we just got done with the full uh, final listen of... Uh, this uh, fantastic record you are experienced now i paid you to engineer this record that yes. is not the reason you're saying it's fantastic right correct yeah okay you don't you don't pay me for my opinion that's true <laughs> I, my I, musical I, opinion perhaps but yeah no i i uh no i thoroughly enjoyed um working on this record and uh just being a part of it and also listening to it so. well thanks i pay you to push buttons and make me sound good which you which you have done and i thank you for that you thank you for your hard work now you said full, and I, I want to leave some secrets. There is more music that's going to be on the actual CD than there will be on streaming. What do you think about the idea to hold some extra stuff back for the hard copy? I think it's genius. Yeah, I, I remember when you were kind of giving me the vision for how the album would play through and everything. Um First of all, you taught me some, some stuff about kind of formatting and uh, kind of what is possible with this uh, this type of media. But um, I think, yeah, just using uh, I think I think what you said was if you're going to put it on a CD, you might as well use a CD for what CDs can do. I and so that's that. that's really unique. I think uh, that's that's kind of a lost um, kind of sub sub art form um, that a lot of people a don't know about and if they do they don't use it anymore because of how streaming has become so prevalent um so i think it was really cool to uh kind of throw some easter eggs and some hidden gems and into uh, the record so i don't want to be super explicit for the listeners but here are some things that i'll say and then we'll let people extrapolate and you know rizzo being a young fella and not growing up where cds were the only thing he listened to you did not have this experience when you were a teenager uh, those of you who are my age, uh, Generation Xers, will have had this experience. You know, sometimes you would buy a CD, and the back cover would say how many songs there were and how much music there was. But when you put the CD in the CD player, sometimes there was stuff on there that it didn't say anything about in the packaging. And, hey, I got bonus stuff. That is the situation with I Am Experienced. The hard copies will have content that is not on the packaging and that will not go to streaming. So if you wish to hear the entire project as a whole, the way that we just did for our listening session today, you should probably get the CD. Uh, In addition to all of whatever you might be finding when you listen to the CD, uh, there's also going to be a 16-page booklet with it with minor notes and artwork and essays to contextualize the content. So I want to make sure that if you spend your hard earned money on me, I'm giving you artwork in return. 
so enough about that. I want to talk more about because you know I'm I'm using Rizzo's time here, so I actually want him to say stuff. <laughs> What's your favorite song on the CD? I think as far as the ones that we're going to acknowledge exist. Right, right. <laughs> the official, um, not the alleged tracks. Um, I think uh, it's 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 really hard to narrow down, um, but it's going to be between... Edited! And I think probably Plantation for me. We're going to have to edit that out. Edited! It's totally not one of the songs. Oh, it's not? It's, yeah, it's a hidden one. Oh, well, it's That's probably okay. between Bleep and... Yeah, uh, we'll bleep that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably, yeah, it's probably between Bleep and... Uh, plantation um one of the hidden tracks i'll say one of the alternative tracks and plantation um and i hope that a lot of people are able to come across uh the first one that i said because i think that uh it's a really powerful song that has a lot of meaning and a really great message and also is very pleasant to listen to which is uh a little bit of an oxymoron (laughs) um but yeah so for plantation um, I think it's one of those uh, one of those songs that talks about a topic that is so much out in the open that so that so many people don't even think about as an issue, you know. And so it gives that uh, the purpose of you know education, you know, as a as uh, in, included with uh, you know just great musical uh, movements and theory and lyrics and writing and all that kind of stuff so uh instrumentation and it, it really came together well um and so that's that's definitely high on my list for all these tracks i'm thrilled to have gotten hannah mary to play a banjo for me in that song uh dear listener you might not know this but banjos were actually invented by the enslaved on plantations they attempted to make the kind of instrument that they had made back home in west africa and the banjo is a black instrument, which right. you don't ever hear in black music anymore, or what most people would consider to be black music. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and that's the thing is that the banjo is also a precursor instrument to uh, the guitar, you know, and so um, just looking at where that came from and, you know, we're, as we're, again, we're talking about black music, we invented, you know, <laughs> these instruments. And so, you know, the music that comes from them is a, is a product of that. So you played guitar on a lot of this record and you mentioned to me when I first started making this record that you don't always get to play guitar when you're when you're engineering so this was kind of a different thing for you yeah well I think I think with this record um you know it was a lot more than just engineering it for me you know I I really felt like I was a part of uh the creation of this this record and you know this was much more of a collaborative effort than a lot of the other projects that I'm uh, involved in. And, you know, some projects it's nice just to sit back and press buttons and uh, other projects it's nice to not be involved with the button pressing at all and just, you know, be able to be musical and creative. And that's nice. And then uh, you get that, that good mix as well uh, with projects like this, where um, I do get to uh, flex my creative muscles and also um, my, my kind of knowledge about engineering and all that kind of stuff and bring it all together to build a project like this. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I always enjoy playing guitar. That's why I got into, you know, uh, music is because I found that love for guitar. So being able to kind of embed that on this music is, was really enjoyable experience. At some point during this process, you tracked the Creek that's out back of the studio. Yeah. It didn't end up, we didn't get a lot of wind. We, we did get mostly water. That was pretty good. Yeah, uh, that that was kind of a, a exercise and kind of practicality. You know, it's, you know, I can go and scour the internet for an hour trying to find the perfect sound to capture what we're going for on this record. Or I can just use what's directly around me. And so not only did I get the uh, the creek that's back there, there was also a cricket that was cricketing yes, right outside the window cricket. yeah and so jiminy out there um i got him on the record as well i uh, just pointed the microphone straight at him got his feature in and he he's a really natural wild. he's a professional <laughs> and i don't think he charges union scales so yeah no he's, he's great yeah. you also and i'm not going to tell the listeners which song this is on because i would like them to discover it you tracked an empty box yes a cardboard <laughs> 
a cardboard box. Well, and that the interesting thing is, even with that knowledge now that the listener has that I did that, I think it'd still be difficult to know where that happened <laughs> in the record, you know. Um, and so, yeah, that was that was a, another, you know, exercise and uh, practicality is just like use what you got and use what's around you. And so just going for the sound that we, we created with that. Honestly, I don't know another way that we could have done that without hundreds of people, <laughs> you know, doing what we were going for. So um, I think that worked out great. Yeah. I'm going to assume this was the first time you ever had to mic up a box. You would be correct. Yes. First you're, and last. Like there's <laughs> I probably have not, done not a since. manual in engineering school for in case you have to put a mic on a box, this is where you should place it. No, I, I've never seen that chapter in the uh, the engineering handbook. <laughs> um, that's not even in the addendum. Um, yeah, it's a... Uh, <laughs> But yeah, you know, it's just it's it's using your resources and being creative. You know, there's no uh, no guide book to being creative. It's just you know whatever comes around. And so you know, you have a track like that as well. Um, that's one of the um, uh, tracks that hopefully the listener is able to find um, where you just kind of built this um, this ensemble. You know, using the same instrument. And it's it's really unique how that that comes together um, because you know most people would never think to use you know an instrument in that way um so yeah i think that is embodied in a lot of the records on this or on a lot of the tracks on this record you were 16 years younger than me and which is plenty cool hey josh come say hi now joshua chan literally just walked into the room and joshua chan appears on this record he plays some keys and he What's was an on? assistant What's engineer and it really wouldn't be the same without your input. So uh, thank you for helping make the record. Yes, sir, you're very welcome, man. I'm going to have to burn. Well, you know what? I only brought the one CD, but I'd love to burn him one. Uh, you can't have mine. I only brought one. But uh, <laughs> give him give him the stuff. I want him to hear it now that it's done. Of course. Yeah, Josh Josh actually played a big part in, uh, in uh, this record as well. And you'll hear his work on that. So welcome, Josh. It's, it's nice to see you. <laughs> So one of the challenges is we come from different generations of music listening and as an older person, my understanding of how music recording works is a little different from yours. And I had to adjust to being in a studio where not all of the instruments were around and you could, by which I mean, I'm used to going to a studio where if I need a Wurlitzer or a Rhodes, there's a Wurlitzer or a Rhodes in the room. This room is not quite big. It's not quite big enough to have that amount of gear. Now, we can get those sounds, but we get them uh, through MIDI or through the computer or through effects, and it sounds just fine, but that was, a, that was an adjustment that I had to make to a different, a different way of recording. Am I the oldest guy that's come in here to make a record with oh, you? No, not, no? Even, not even close. So you <laughs> didn't have to worry about adjusting to like the way that I am used to making records. No, and uh, I've I've done records a lot of different ways, and this isn't the only studio that I've I've worked out of. Obviously, I've done the most work in this studio, being it, being my studio. Because you're the boss. Right. Yeah, it's my studio, but. Um, you know, uh, I, I have done other um, methods of recording, um, you know, and so I've I've been introduced to, to that sort of style. And so I think that's one of my strengths, just being able to uh, translate those styles into the resources that I have. You know, I think that's one of the best things about the way that the industry is set up now today is that it's so accessible. You know, um, I can't afford a Wurlitzer and a Leslie and, a, you know, seven foot Steinway, <laughs> you know, all, all that kind of stuff. And also, I don't have the space for it. You know, no space. Um but, you know, it that doesn't come out as a sacrifice in the music. You know, we're still able to ac achieve what we need to achieve um, it, without any sacrifice in quality or anything like that. One of the other things that's a generational opinion difference is I don't believe in tuning vocals, which is kind of industry standard today. And you being the nice person that you are granted my wish. <laughs> and if I didn't sing something right, you just made me sing it again. Yep. Uh Encouraged. Like for you? <laughs> I encouraged you to sing it again. Don't say I made you. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's it's a it's a it's a um, an adapt adapt adaptive uh, kind of trait in a lot of engineers that is a challenge for a lot of people. Um, 
you know, a lot of people, it's a, it's a people skill as well, you know, trying to work with people to get the best out of them. You know, everybody can't be Mariah Carey and you shouldn't, you shouldn't expect everybody to be Mariah Carey, you know, but everybody does have a best level that they can get to. And so just being able to pull that out of people, you know, is a, a trait that I, I aim for. Um, so yeah, every, every record doesn't need vocal tuning. You know, that's, that's absolutely, absolutely true. So, um, a lot of records do a lot of a lot of records don't and knowing where that line is is really important to me um i take a lot of pride in um kind of going for natural vocals where it fits so, so i'm going to compliment rizzo and uh, i'm probably going to clip this later and maybe you can use it as a blurb we we recorded a gospel song and i was not able to get a full choir which is really what i wanted but with the power of overdubs and a quality engineer and producer you can get that effect with a few vocalists. I think I am on the choir for the gospel song 16 to 18 times. And Rizzo worked really hard to bring the best performance out of me. Those are probably among the best vocals I've ever sung on any recording I've ever made. And I had to do them over and over again in different parts of that room over there facing different directions, uh, singing different pitches because we were building a choral harmony. And that came about from me telling Rizzo, here's the effect I want. And then you had the wherewithal <laughs> to arrange that part, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. You came in, you said, here's, here's what I want it to sound like. I was like, okay, you know what you're signing yourself up for here. You know, I think it came out to about I'm going to say 34 takes total <laughs> that we ended up keeping. I'm sure you did probably a double or triple. There was a lot of singing. <laughs> yeah. That we ended up cutting. Um, but yeah. Yeah. You know, um, just, you know, getting you in different places in the room and, you know, singing in with different inflections and, you know, slightly different timing and um, whatnot, um, you know, really was able to capture that effect of a giant choir in a giant room, <laughs> you know, singing a giant song, you know, so. Um, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed making that record as well. That's, that's a lot of fun, and I love that technique as well. Um, as well as on, um, uh, I was about to say Hold Awake, uh, as uh, Layton, you know, we, we did that same sort of effect where it sounded like a crowd full of people singing, no, 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 um, did that same sort of thing there. So it was the same sort of technique, but I, I think I, I think I helped you out on that one. I think I you was did. recording. You, you were definitely on yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't leave you alone uh, to do that, so. That's a good segue, because uh, before we hit the record button, we were talking about Layton, which is the first song we started working on, probably because that was the easiest arrangement. Mm -hmm. And as a I've just met you, let's work together thing, it's probably best to start with something that's simple-ish. Sure. And I came in here with my bass, and I actually composed that song on bass, and... I had basically just a skeleton. What did you think when I started playing that? And I told you, like I told you what I wanted it to be, but all I'm bringing you is just the one part in my voice. Yeah, well, it's funny, uh, you know, whenever I have an artist that comes in, it's my first time working with them, I like to, you know, kind of look them up a little bit and just kind of see what's 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 coming down the pipeline. Um, and for most people, that's very helpful. You know, I get a very good idea of, you know, what kind of music they like and, how they like their voice to sound and that sort of stuff. And I went to your website and I found your music and it made me more confused <laughs> about what you were about to do. I had no idea just cause you have such a, a great variety of uh, styles and genres that you work in. So I was like, I just, I, we'll just see what happens. <laughs> I don't know. It's not even worth uh, guessing or getting worked up over, um, you know, but you know, you came in and, uh, the other thing uh, that a lot of uh, artists don't do is just kind of have the music, you know, already ready for me. You know, um, a lot. Most of the times, I'm not involved in the musical part of it. I'm involved in the engineering part of it, so it's not really too much concerning me, anyways. Um, but when it does concern me, it's a lot more of an ear thing. You know, it's like, all right, pick up these chords I'm doing and help me out. You know, and, but you came in, and you're like, all right, here's the chords. If you can add something in here, that'd be awesome. Here's what I'm gonna do. Um, and then let's come together and figure it out. Um, and that accelerates the process so much and kind of gives me a very direct um, d direction, you know, of where to take it and whatnot. And so um, 
I think the musical experience that I've had and a lot of the uh, albums and bands that I listen to coming up um, ha- is somewhat similar to, to your experience as well. And so I think when that, when those two uh, kind of came together, built something really good and really like how that record came out. Yeah, and I, I wasn't too terribly dictatorial. There's a no, no. keyboard riff in that song that I had no idea you were going to put in there, and it's perfect. Mm-hmm. And the way you layered the guitar parts, I did not tell you how to do that. I was just like, here's the chord structure. This is what I want it to feel like. And I think it's cool that there's a lot of you in that track as well. Uh, even though your, your name's not in the writing side of it, but you are the producer and you get the guitar credit and all that good stuff. But yeah, that's, uh, it sounds like you while also sounding like me. I agree. Yeah. And I think it was, <laughs> and the, I think the prime example of that is when we were, when we were initially tracking it. Um, and I think we had it at a point where we we're like, okay, this is good. It had three guitar layers, maybe, you know, like one, one layer that was double tracked and then a, a second guitar. And you came back, and you're like, is that enough guitar? <laughs> I was like, oh, let's see. We'll throw some more on there. And ended up with, like, eight layers of guitar. <laughs> you know? um, yeah, that's a perfect example, you know. Um, and that's that's kind of my whole philosophy when it comes to engineering and production is, like, it's not just my song. You know, obviously my name is going to be on it, and I want to do the best that I can, but also I want to help fulfill the vision of the person who brought it to me. You know, I don't want to just kind of totally dominate. And you 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 did the same thing, which is not uh, very common for a lot of artists where you're saying, I don't want to just dominate this song. I want you to be a part of this as well. And so I'll let you do what you're good at, which is guitar. And then I'll just kind of sit back and let you know what I think of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so that was, that was very helpful for my creative process. I just totally blanked the one I was going to ask you. That's that's the I'm 45 years old part of me. It's uh, also before we hit the record button, you mentioned that when you're doing non-music work, you do like to play music in the background, but that it can't have lyrics because when there's words, you actually focus and pay attention to the words. See, I listen when you talk, Rizzo. A lot of people don't listen to music that way. Right. Um, a lot of people are music first, lyrics later, mm-hmm. or don't even bother with the lyrics at all, which is really a crying shame because songwriters work really hard on our lyrics. I mean, right. You work really hard on the lyrics. You really wish someone would pay attention. Not at the expense of the music, of course, but this is the whole package. Right. That means that you've listened to the lyrics on I Am Experienced. So as a, as a complete project, having listened to those lyrics, how does... How does this album make you feel? Uh, that's a really interesting question to answer because, um, and one of the things I was spoken to you about is how beautiful a lot of this music is and how pleasant it is to listen to um, until you listen to the lyrics. And then he's like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, um, you know, some of the, the lyrics are really dark and, you know, honest and appropriate, you know, but you're really saying something there, you know. Um, so whether it's uh, "Hey Baby, Take the Keys," um, it's a really nice groove. It feels great. Um, you know, it's a nice kind of melancholy, easy listening experience. And then you listen to the lyrics, like, okay, all right, we're we're actually doing something here. We're talking about real things, you know. Um, or uh, um, "Plantation," you know, for example, same exact thing. It's it's a really eerie kind of creepy song um, in part of it, and then the chorus is really nice and and big and beautiful and it just feels lush and you know all sorts of great things um and you're talking about this is where people were beaten and bred <laughs> you know um so you you know that's that's exactly the thing so um i was talking about you know uh when i'm writing emails and doing spreadsheets and that sort of stuff I, yeah i like to listen to uh, whether it's lo-fi or jazz or you know drum and bass just something like that that doesn't require my brain to process it um but when i'm not doing that even if i'm i'm driving or doing dishes and that sort of stuff i do like to listen you know i'd rather focus on the lyrics and focus on the dishes <laughs> you know what i mean and, and so um i think that it'll be a really interesting listening experience for a lot of the listeners here um 
on the second listen of this record, you know, going back and catching all the things that, oh, I didn't even realize he was talking about that on this record. You know, I was just listening to that beautiful piano sound, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's uh, it's really great. Well, I don't remember your original question, though. You were asking me just kind of my overall. How did it make you feel? Yeah, okay. Um, it made me feel uh, educated, you know, and in general, this uh this process of recording this has educated me a lot, you know, just in kind of the, the kind of stories you've told me about the inspiration of these, these songs or um, just kind of some anecdotal, you know, kind of things that you've, you've explained to me. Um, but also, you know, um, uh, some of the songs like good times, you know, you talk about a lot of things that our people have been through um, and just um, different experiences and where that music comes from, comes from as well. I think that's, uh, really big part and just kind of make me feel like uh, I'm learning while I'm listening to this record, you know, not only about history or whatever, but just about the experience, you know, and you call it, you are experienced. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, even though I have lived the experience personally, you know, I identify with all the, all the music that's on this record. Um, you know, still there's just a, a different perspective, you know, into all this, all this. So educated is definitely a, a really great one. Um, also, I just, I feel heard, you know, I feel like uh, my story has been told now and then there's people that are going to um, uh, listen and identify with it as well. So um, educated and heard, I think, uh, are really two great descriptors for this. Um, That's deep. It is. Yeah. The record's deep. <laughs> Last question. OK. Your name is on this album. When when it goes out, your name is going to be in the hard copies. Your name is going to be in the digital realm you're part of this your name's on a lot of work because you engineer a lot of records uh folks Rizzo's a talented dude makes a lot of good music this is how i discovered him through through an artist that is a mutual friend of ours and he make he engineered and produced this artist's music so you're used to hey go listen to this because it came out of my studio the last question is why should people listen to i am experienced in your opinion so it's, it's I am experienced. I thought it was you are experienced. It's I am experienced. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, well, I'm sorry. I think I said you are experienced a few times. All Why right. should people listen to I am experienced according to uh, Rizzo and Rizzo's opinion? Uh, you should listen to I am experienced um, a because it's just great music. It's we really well done. It's really thoughtful and really cared after music. We put a lot of. Um, not just time, you know, because just doing something for a long time doesn't make it good, <laughs> you know. Um, but, you know, we, we've put a lot of uh, thought into the details of this album um, in even just the most minor of things. Um, and everything sounds the way that we, we wanted it to sound. I don't think we skimped on anything or sacrificed or, you know, settled for anything. You know, we, we got this to sound the way that we wanted it to sound to convey the uh image and message that we wanted to to get out um so if you you know you want that sort of honesty from the music that you listen to i think this is a great place to find that um i, I additionally think that um this is some of, this is some of my best work you know not even to brag about it but i'm very proud of um how much i've been able to um find in myself creatively um, because I, I don't get to work on a lot of this type of music um, very often. And so this is a, a, a different experience um, for me. It's some, it's uh, not a uncomfortable experience. It's, it's, this is, it's still home for me. Um, but you know, there's not a lot of people coming in my studio looking to do some funk music, you know, it's a lot of rappers and a lot of singers and that sort of stuff. But um, bluegrass doesn't, or not bluegrass, but um uh, Americana doesn't really walk through the doors too often. Um, so, you know, it's stuff that I listen to on my own, on my own time. Uh, so I'm familiar with it and it's home for me, but, um, just being able to get into that zone and, uh, kind of put all the, uh, all the, the load from that, that, uh, experience into this music has been, uh, really beneficial. And so I think that translates into the music and I think that a lot of people will be able to hear uh, our passion for music making and um, just our level of quality that we strive for and it'll be an enjoyable experience. Thank you very much for your hard work. I don't think I could have made this record with anyone else. I mean, I could have, but it wouldn't have come out this well. So I really do appreciate your hard work. 
I'm glad to be a part. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a ton of fun for me. Can't wait till we do it again uh, on whatever the next record shapes up to be, where it's a, who knows where Mike Bankhead's going to go. <laughs> Thank you again to Rizzo for being exactly what I needed as far as an engineer and producer on this project. You could tell from our conversation that he's proud of the work that he did. I am also proud of the work that I did on I Am Experienced. I'm proud of Rizzo for his hard work. I'm proud of all the talented black creatives and musicians that contributed to this project. I really, really, really want you to listen to I Am Experienced. If you haven't heard it yet, you can listen to the six songs that are on streaming anywhere that music can be streamed. Just look for Mike Bankhead and I Am Experienced. But as you might have noticed from our conversation, there is additional music not on the streaming services, and one of them might be Rizzo's favorite song on the entire project. If you'd like to hear that, head on over to my website, MikeBankheadMusic.com, click on I Am Experienced, and I would be very happy to ship you your own personal copy of the CD. You could also pick that up on my Bandcamp page, mikebankhead.bandcamp.com. Wait a minute. What if you don't have a CD player? No worries. When you get your copy of the CD, it contains a key to unlock a hidden website with all the bonus music that is not on streaming. That hidden website also has videos, behind-the-scenes photos, demos, additional artwork, a whole lot of bonus content just for you for having bought the CD. There is also a video component to the I Am Experience project that is coming your way in 2024. Thank you again very much, dear listener, for listening to the podcast, and I'll be back shortly with another conversation with a talented musician.